Okay, so we are recording potpourri today. So, okay, David, you want to walk us through? Um, it looks like a folliculitis. Probably suffered folliculitis. Looks like there's a lot of eosinophils. Um, so, separate folliculitis with eos. What things do you think of? So, Mayaki's is probably number one. Mayaki's number mm -hmm. one. What else? Um, eosinophilic folliculitis. Eosinophilic folliculitis of HIV. Usually not so separative, though. The other folliculitis to Calvin's is another big one that tends to do eosinophils. So you can even make out the EOs at scan here. <coughs> and the crust. And then um, somewhat polymorphous infiltrate. I agree, actually, that um, HIV-associated eosinophilic folliculitis is still in the differential. It's not so heavily <coughs> neutrophilic. It's more a crust above in this particular example. And then you look in there and you see something's going on in the follicle. And you can see the chains of, of spores there. So that is, in fact, a Miyake's fungal folliculitis. If I were Dr. Miyake, I would not have called it a granuloma, but the name stuck. Okay. Big piece of tissue. <coughs> Big piece of tissue. Okay, let's start out here first off. Hold on, we got a collar here. We are not even close. Someone was having a good time with the scope. <laughs> okay. There we go. So first off, judging by the red, 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 relatively small collagen bundles, kid skin. kid skin, okay, and then tell me about what's going on in this kid skin. Um, I'm not really sure. You've got got fat, fat, and got you've got amphiphilic. So the so amphiphilic muscle stuff muscle. looks like what? Uh, mucin maybe? Or? Yeah, it's mucinous but with fibroblasts. So like primitive mesenchyme type tissue and then yeah. it's starting to make collagen and then the collagen's becoming fibroblast rich, immature collagen and then mature collagen. So what would a kid have that has fat, mesenchymal tissue, Dermally. Immature and mature collagen. You don't want to jump in? Fibrous hematoma of infancy. <coughs> so fibrous hematoma of infancy has um, fat, which is the one part that's not fibrous, and then it has everything from primitive mesenchyme through to mature collagen and everything in between. And it tends to be in lumps, the so-called organoid appearance, where you have a lump of this and a lump of that. And what I forgot to do here is take this down to 50% so everyone gets a scan view of it. So mesenchymal type tissue, it starts to form collagen, which you can see in here, and then varying grades of maturity of collagen, all embedded together in various lumps. It does look like a pan folliculum. Mark. Uh, uh, pan folliculum. Pan folliculum. So we have a pilar tumor with pilometrical differentiation, but you also are making hair fiber, you have trichohyalin, areas are cystic, some areas connect to the epidermis. So you're absolutely right, this is pan follicular differentiation and that's a pan folliculoma. Well done. Someone pass that <coughs> easy button over. That was easy. We'll start on this side. Okay. What would give you an infundibulum like cyst filled with hairs? Mm. 
Uh, yeah, so a ruptivellus hair cyst would be one, but this could also be something that has a tuft of hairs protruding from it, because that's what the rest of it looks like. Yeah, so tri trichofolliculoma, absolutely correct. Very good. Mama and babies, big mama follicle and all the baby follicles. Got a lot of blue cells. Doesn't look great. Um, no, I kind of agree with the doesn't <laughs> look great part. Um, looks like there's a good amount of activity. Um, yeah, so something that looks like a tumor, like a tumor or malignant, and then you want to try to look at differentiation. I'm trying to see if there are any areas that retain a little better. This one is so high grade. I mean, it could be met, it could be all sorts of things. Um, looking to see if we have any retained duct differentiation, which I don't really make out. Apparently this is a portion of a malignant uh, porocarcinoma. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so de-differentiated, you really don't see much of the original. Uh, so parts of it look kind of like a basal cell, but then... Yeah, it looks look kind of like a basal cell. So what pattern of growth? These things that worm their way through the collagen. They're not spiky, they're round, but like worms, they're worming their way deep between the collagen bundles so it is not something that can be defined with a curette. It looks more micronodular. Like a micronodular type. <coughs> ahead and read that one's here. It's a little dark for those on the screen. Okay, so micronodular pattern, um, not spiky, but although this area actually gets a little spiky and infiltrated there. And you can see how the stroma changes. Around the infiltrative type, it becomes a fibroblast-rich stroma. And the micronodular just worms its way through normal collagen. Neither one can be defined with a curette. So their extent is much greater than what we, you would expect clinically. So you think that's a cleft, or is that, that may be artifactual, mm -hmm. that it's kind of torn apart. So let's look here and see what you got here. Um, what kind of inflammatory cell? I mean, I think or is it kind of a mix? Yeah. Probably some neutrophils in here too. And there's certainly a neutrophilic crust <coughs> above. Yeah. So you may sort of want to define better what's hiding in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd even be concerned about whether some of that could be Langerhans type cells or even epithelial cells. So you might want to mark it. But assuming it's really just lymphs and neutrophils. And then you have this kind of a pattern here. Um, sure. So what do you think this thing used to be? Maybe a hair follicle? Yeah. So it's probably a separative folliculitis mm -hmm. with a lot of pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. Mm -hmm. um, so separative folliculitis can be infectious. It can be acneiform. Mm -hmm. It can be um, pustular drug related, and um, it can also be the early lesion of pathogy of something like pyoderma gangrenosum. Mm -hmm. um, this was billed as a patient with sweets, mm -hmm. 
Um, sweets usually does not start in the follicle. That's usually more a pyoderma gangrenosum type feature. So the patient, we don't know by history if the patient has um, malignancy associated. They might live somewhere on the on the spectrum between the two. Superficial B vascular infiltrate with some acanthosis. Yep, so you have and acanthosis, and what else do you have in here? Inflammatory infiltrate. Inflammatory infiltrate mm -hmm. accompanied by all these tiny little white circles, which would make it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a little spongiotic. Mm -hmm. right. um, so. Is this acute with Langerhans cell microabscess and large vesicles, or is this had time to develop acanthosis and the sponge is sort of in the background? Probably the latter. Always the second <laughs> one. <laughs> so um, this is more like a subacute spongiotic dermatitis. So what's your differential for subacute spongiotic? Uh, I took a derm contact derm. Yeah, exactly. So atopic derm can become truly eczematous, <coughs> especially when it's scratched. Contact derm. Um, numular usually is a little more acute, but you can see subacute phases of numular. Um, even if you were on the scalp or face, subderm, you may just not see the follicle to see the scale crust around the follicle. So, very good. Little crust in the so you got something that's definitely crusted, right? right and here. then we go towards the edge where it's a little more towards what's happening acutely, right? This is the crust is probably more secondary change, and now we're getting more <coughs> to the primary process here. Is there a scabella in there or something? Something in there? So that would be a very good thing to think of. Um, you know, we've said many times you will miss. Tinea, 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 mm -hmm. syphilis, and scabies in your career. I just missed one recently. It happens. So, I don't see any. It's a good thing to think of. Your epithelium or your corneum is certainly peeling away, right? And you have some of these rounded up cells kind of floating away. And some of them, as in Star Trek, are Klingons mm -hmm. to the bottom of the corneum. So you got Klingons and floataways, with a corneum peeling off, a split that's subcorneal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what kind of things will give you a subcorneal split? <coughs> so, pemphigus foliaceous. Bullus impetigo. So bullus impetigo, you have an, um, a toxin that's targeting desmoglein 1 instead of an antibody that's targeting desmoglein 1. And then all of the variants of foliaceous, which includes most drug-induced pemphigus, um, the ones that give um, vulgaris are the ones that end with oxycam, right? Most other drug-induced pemphigus is foliaceous pattern. And um, and then senior usher, pemphigus erythematosus, phobus salvagem, they're all types okay. of foliaceous. And phobus salvagem means, translates as what in Portuguese? Wi wildfire. <laughs> wildfire. Savage fire or wildfire, right? So, um, it's usually in the jungly areas thought maybe to be an arthropod vector mm -hmm. and your skin is on fire because you have foliaceous. Okay. So we have a lot of pigment. A lot of pigment. And what do you think that pigment is? Name three brown pigments in skin. 
Hemocytarin and Okay, and so given all the blood here, which one do you think? Um, Hemocytarin. Hemocytarin. And then if you want to be sure, you go a little higher and you put your condenser down and you see if it twinkles at you. It is in fact refractile and it's got little bits of greeny yellow in it too, which means yes, it's hemocytarin. And so you got something with hemocytarin and then tell me about the epithelium over this big tumor. Yes. Is it thin? No. It's so name three tumors mm -hmm. that will give you acanthosis rather than effacement. Um, Dermatofibromas, spits, and So <laughs> granular cell tumor, yeah. spits, and DF, and of those, which one has a vascular hemocytorotic variant? Dermatofibroma. Yeah. Very good. So, you know, take the easy way out if you got. Okay, so it looks like there's a cystic structure. Several. Yeah, there's several cystic structures. So there are horn cysts in it. And then how about the epithelial component? How would you characterize that? Mm, like a basaloid proliferation. Uh, and it's it's pattern. Um, little spiky. Oh, um, is this the uh, paisley tie? It's a paisley <laughs> tie pattern with horn cysts, <laughs> and not only calcification but ossification. Right. So this is a bona fide example of whatever it is, and so. Which of the Paisley tie tumors is most prone to get horn cysts? So trachoepithelioma, DTE, desmoplastic uh, trachoep, that's also the one that tends to calcify and sometimes ossify. And this one has a background of a nevus, and that is actually pretty common. Okay. So it's thought to be some kind of weird twin spotting phenomenon mm -hmm. where you get a your genes crossing over and lack gives you a DTE, too much gives you a nevus or the other way around because um, it's thousands of times chance and chance alone that you see desmoplastic trachoep together with a nevus. Okay. So Chelsea, I assume you're passing, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe yes, until next okay. one. <laughs> okay, that would be fine. <laughs> So I see a lot of sebaceous glands yep. in this area, um, some inflammation as well. Okay, so first off, where do you think you might be? In the dermis. Um, it, with the big, fat sebaceous glands, what part of the body? Oh, um, on the face? Yeah, and you got lots of demodex mites there, so probably face, right? Mm -hmm. And then the pattern of inflammation, is it top to bottom, side to mm -hmm. side, or is it sort of broken into little little boxes and little, little boxes surrounded by a collagen. spared border zone of collagen so what what does that sits on facial skin with infiltrate surrounded by little border zones if you were german what would you call a border Grins. Grins, okay. yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, a grind zone is a border zone. Um, so w what sits on the face with those areas of inflammation surrounded by the little border zones? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. yeah. granuloma facial, right? And then if you look higher, you expect to have neutrophils. You expect to have EOs. It's going to be centered around a vessel. But it's a scan diagnosis because you're on facial skin and you have these little geometric shapes of infiltrate. Everyone's surrounded by a grant zone. Grant's just meaning border. Big, huge, sebaceous something, and given its size, probably most likely carcinoma. I mean, I suppose you could have an adenoma that big, but it looks like in some areas you got fairly large cells with prominent nucleoli and a whole lot of mitotic figures, so probably a sebaceous CA. 
Well done. You just need that easy button to pass to you. That was easy. Thank you. <laughs> Um, actually, it's not a bad thought at <laughs> scan because it's superficial and deep. It fogs out the DE junction. Um, it's got some cytoplasm in the background, so it's amphiphilic. That is not a bad scan for syphilis. That is not a bad thought at all. It's certainly something that's crusted, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It has pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. It has sheets of plasma cells, which would get you thinking syphilis again until you look higher and you see all of these little oh. dot like things at the periphery of the vacuole. <coughs> so what is this? That is leishmaniasis. That's crazy. Good. But I agree that scan you actually get extra <laughs> points for thinking <laughs> of syphilis with that scan appearance or thinking of syphilis every time you look at anything. <laughs> uh, Shadow corneum. I think I remember the slide. But there's these like uh, dark, kind of atypical sounds right yeah. here. Shadow corneum. And so, you know, we have a shave, and, and these one. cells, how would you describe these cells with the eccentric nucleus and lots of yeah. red cytoplasm? Rhabdoid. Or rhabdoid, and what's your most common rhabdoid tumor in skin? Melanoma. Melanoma. Yeah. So that's, you know, something that was a crusted lesion <laughs> shaved <laughs> off. And you're taking the top of a very ugly melanoma. So, rhabdoid in skin is usually melanoma. Um, Bill James told me a very funny story. Speaking of always thinking of syphilis, that he had a um, one of his residents. She would, she missed several cases of syphilis when they were presented at conference. So every conference he would put in syphilis slides and you know, everyone she would get clinical slides of syphilis. And after a couple of weeks of that, she said aloud innocently, Dr. James, you keep giving me syphilis. <laughs> Cute. Yeah, so you're kind of in tumor. the muscle, right? And what kind of tumor do you think it is? Fatty. And what kind of fatty tumor? <coughs> what kind of fat is this? That's all full of bubbles, and the nuclei are not scalloped. I guess like a. Yeah, I'm hearing brown. Or I'm hearing brown fat hibernoma. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so this is just an intramuscular hibernoma, like you would have an intramuscular lipoma. So <laughs> 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 And then you have cartilage. So you have cartilage very close to the skin, and the skin has small adnexal structures, and it's fairly sun damaged. Tragus. So it could be a uh, tragus area, or certainly somewhere on the ear, probably, right? Something that's had a lot of sun exposure, has tiny little follicles, and has cartilage close to the skin. So probably an ear. And. Tell me about the inflammation Yeah. So you relapsing, have relapsing polychondritis. You are absolutely correct. This is relapsing polychondritis. Well mm -hmm. done. So what are your clues? Number one is your infiltrate is neutrophilic, right? Yeah. Neutrophilic usually goes with something acute or something chronic. Acute. Acute. And yet you have all of this fibrosing granulation tissue which suggests something chronic. So you have an overall chronic process, but acute mm -hmm. episodes of inflammation, and you see it all histologically, Relapse. right? Mm -hmm. So relapsing polychondritis. So the relapsing part you can see histologically by neutrophils, which are usually an acute infiltrate on a background of very chronic mm -hmm. fibrovascular change. Kind of cool. You might 
actually, I don't think this one showed up very well. We're gonna skip that. Let me go to this. Necrosis. So, full thickness necrosis of the epithelium, and did it happen slowly or quickly? Quickly, quickly and you know that because your stratum corneum is completely normal. Right? So, an acute horn, and then full thickness necrosis of the epidermis, and so what's your differential? Um, Necrosis. Yeah. Your uh, drug, drug, dr drug induced and, uh, full thickness uh, necrosis, toxic epidermal necrolysis, yeah. or erythema multiforme. So that's an EMTEN type appearance. Full thickness necrosis, relatively few lymphocytes, full thickness necrosis, acute corneum. The biggest look-alike would be fixed drug eruption. So we look for papillodermal <coughs> fibrosis, deep pigment, polymorphous infiltrate, not really there. So it's very, very bloody, right? Yeah. And then describe the thing itself. Kind of looks sebaceous almost. Um, lots of oblong, clear epithelial nests. Um, and a very, very bloody tumor with kind of elongated oblong. Clearness, yeah. renal, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Renal carcinoma map. Is this HE stain? H and E stain. Yep. Um. If you're thinking not much, yeah. you're just about <laughs> there, right? And so we're going to look a little higher, and I'm going to help you out because when you go much higher, <laughs> you see all of these little black stipples in the lamina propria of the sweat gland. So this is. Argeria. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you didn't get it because you you focus on gold and platinum, not silver. <laughs> <laughs> but but this in fact is silver deposition in the lamina propria of chrysiasis tends to be along the elastic fibers and out in the interstitium, and argeria is those little black stipples right in the lamina propria of the sweat gland. One of the other things you can do is if you flip down your condenser and diffract it, Argeria is diffractive. We're not seeing it super well here, but they kind of light up and are bright. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's a well circumscribed nodule and it has mixoid areas mm -hmm. and it has spindle cell areas and it has little bits of ropey collagen mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. and it has lipocytes. Spindle cell lipoma. Spindle cell lipoma <laughs> and this one is just a so called low fat mm -hmm. spindle cell lipoma. Blue cells. Now, are they totally blue or is there a little bit of pink around them? There's a pink around them. So it has cytoplasm, it doesn't palisade, it has duct differentiation, and it's filled with sweat. 
Cylindroma. Oh, um, cylindroma is totally blue because it differentiates towards the lower portion, the secretory portion. This one has cytoplasm, so it's differentiating up towards the duct portion. Sweat gland tumors never palisade. They're often sweat filled, have ducts. Mm -hmm. So what's the broad category for something that differentiates towards the acrosyringium? <laughs> Acrospironema, <laughs> right? And then this one um, you could call a dermal duct tumor, Winkleman, if you if you want. Um, but a type of acrospiroma, poromer, hydradenoma, they're all the same. Lots of names for the same tumor. have is this, which <laughs> is what? Argeria. Argeria. Very good. Do we still have a drug deposition box up there? I think we have one. Let's try to put that in the drug one. The drug chapter. Yeah, a drug and there foreign. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just to make it easy to find when you want to take a photo mic. What else do you have to think about if it looks completely normal in HME? Oh, when it looks normal, that's the I vacuum dog pus differential. <laughs> Very memorable. <How> cool <laughs> that? <laughs> that's Joe English's mnemonic I vacuum dog pus. It's in the back of the book. Okay. Okay, so it's like we're on a scalp. So it looks like you're on the scalp, and then what kind of hair is that? Catagen, what's this? Also catagen? Catagen, catagen. <laughs> Everywhere you look, they're catagen <laughs> hairs. So what gives you multiple catagen hairs in the scalp? Trichotillomania, alopecia, areata, and syphilis. You are correct. Those are the big three. And the other thing that you will see, <coughs> just every hair, every hair in catagen is agonal death. So on autopsy, someone who doesn't someone who dies a sort of lingering bad death um, every hair turns to catagen it's like you're headed for the big telogen effluvium in the sky and you never make it to the telogen effluvium right so when you if you ever see you know sometimes you'll see a biopsy and it, there's just nothing but catagen hairs everything is catagen that's autopsy specimen from a lingering death. Um, not very nice thought, but the other ones that we normally see where you have normal antigen hairs and then you have lots of catagen, exactly as you said, would be trichotil, alopecia areata, syphilis, and that's as far as you can get with this one. Okay. Um, I don't see EOs in fibrous tracts, I don't see lymphocytes, I really don't see any clues to any of the others, so you go with your clinical then. Okay, well done. Uh, yes? Is there some parifollicular mucinous fibrosis? Parifollicular mucinous fibrosis, let's see. Uh, no, it's what you're picking up is just as the hairs shrink, the normal elastic sheath okay. becomes, it retracts, and so it becomes thicker gray, but that's just the normal elastic sheath around the follicle. What's, sorry, what's lingering? I'm sorry? Lingering does. Oh, lingering. Yeah. Oh. So a, a, a death that is not quick, a death that takes a slow long, death. long, oh. slow, slow, death. slow, like, um, you like know, in you the ICU for three weeks like before you die. Like in the ICU <laughs> for three <laughs> weeks before you die. That's okay. exactly, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 
you're basically you're in such crisis time that your body puts every last hair into catagen. Um, you know, but way beyond what you would get for a normal telogen effluvium, right? It's like the the big telogen effluvium to come. So, <coughs> I think at first I was thinking Seb, but I think there's atypia. Yeah. So, so it would be a clonal Seb where the nuclei are too big and it's very blue in those areas. So that would be... It would be Bowens. Bowens. Yeah, clonal Bowens. Well done at scan as it should be. All right, so looks like there's um, subcorneal necrosis or at least what shape? What shape are the cells? Oh, round. Round. So, what's going to give you that kind of necrosis and acantholysis in a blister like that? Um, like, I'm not sure. Oh, so anybody? Just yeah, herpes. herpes. Okay. Um. So when you have epithelial destruction and it's reticular, think viral, or acantholytic, okay? And acantholytic would put it in the herpetic family. And then, so you've already kind of nailed it at, as herpes. If we were a few microns away in this hair follicle, you might see follicular or sebaceous necrosis characteristic of zoster. Um, this could be chicken pox, could be simplex, could be zoster. Now we're just going to look a little closer. We already know it's herpetic, but just for grins and chuckles, we see the multinucleation molding and margination of chromatin. Right. But again, it's a scan diagnosis. You've got an acantholytic blister mm -hmm. with full thickness necrosis of the epidermis. So that's going to be herpetic. Looks fairly normal, except that you have what? Pigment incontinence. So you've got some form of PIPA, right? Post-inflammatory pigment alteration. We say that because you don't know if clinically it's hyper or hypo pigmented, right? So PIPA, post-inflammatory pigment alteration. And um, when we look across the base, there are also a few savat bodies. So it's a late stage lichenoid interface dermatitis. And this is a Hispanic woman who has turned ashen gray in all of her sun exposed areas. So she has erythema dyschromicum perstans, ashy dermatosis mm -hmm. of Ramirez. And that's the same really as lichen planus actinicus. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the in Southwest Asia, um, what the British called the Middle East, the um, it was called L. P. actinicus. Um, in India, it was called L. P. actinicus. In Latin America, it was called ashy dermatosis. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you have a patient who's like if the history is a little bit inconsistent, and you're trying to figure out. Do they have some sort of inflammatory rash and this is all PIPA or is this an ashy dermatosis? Do you have to go based on the clinical like color of it? So um, various things can help. Okay. Finding savat bodies okay. right, tells you that it's a late lichenoid. Right. right. So that's a big hint if you find the savat bodies. Um, the little patchy and, as you said, gray, ashy, it's so characteristic, it looks different from other right. PIPA. Um, the gray appearance, um, the photo distribution, um, all of those things help. Often associated um, frontal fibrosing alopecia like in Plana pilaris, other um, forms of LP in the same patient, those can all help.
So, these balls of these granulomatous yeah. things. Um, balls of granulomatous things, and then it's becoming very, very fibrotic. Right. And starting to deposit what kind of red stuff in the middle? Just fibrin. Fibrin. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this would be the early stage of something that's going to have a big fibrin core in the center. Like a rheumatoid nodule. Um, the other thing that you might think of with this would be an early stage of an NXG, mm -hmm. given all the cholesterol yeah. clefts in there. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly a palisading granuloma. It's depositing fibrin that suggests it may grow up to be deep GA or rheumatoid nodule, but it also has lots of cholesterol clefts, which suggests that you know it could be necrobiotic xanthogranuloma. So what things would you want to look for in the patient? Um, so, yeah, so you're looking for a paraprotein. Right. Right. As your clue. So paraprotein would be, you know, probably the big rule out. If they have rheumatoid arthritis, that's probably obvious. fascicles in the dermis, um, I think of like neurothechioma or... Uh, yeah, neurothechioma, although this one, neurothechiomas tend to be pretty well nested, and this kind of infiltrates more between collagen. Mm -hmm. Like a superficial spindle cell lipoma. So superficial spindle cell lipoma absolutely is in the differential. Um, but this one isn't so ropey the collagen. Yeah. It's more like a fibromyxoma, right? Yeah. And so what kind of fibromyxoid things do you get superficially? Superficial fibro superficial acral fibromyxoma. Yeah, so SAF <laughs> and so there's superficial fibromyxomas that are not acral that you get head and neck and then the superficial acral fibromyxoma, so called digital fibromyxoma. Those are the big things in the differential. Lots of pleomorphism, so it's ugly, it's malignant. Lactoses. Many of the cells are not round but elongated, mm -hmm. so some might call them uh, spindled. Spindle, so spindle cell melanoma maybe or there, and something. Is there a distinct grin zone here or are they slammed up against the epidermis? <coughs> okay, so give me a differential. Uh, squamous cell. Yep. Myosarcoma, yeah. Aspex, and, um, and which one of those tends to get Teuton giant cells, sort of like a melanoma? Um, Teuton type things like a xanthogranulomatous a thing, AFX. 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 Yeah. That's where the xantho came from in AFX. of blue cells, and so what are those blue cells? Uh, Judging by the nuclear chromatin pattern. Uh, yep, and the paranuclear half and the eccentric nuclei. It's sheets and sheets of plasma cells. <coughs> and and syphilis. That is exactly <laughs> what this is, is syphilis. <laughs> Very good. Um, <laughs> so you see newts in the horn, yeah. right? So newts in the horn, P. tick, psoriasis, um, tinea, patigo, candida, septum, syphilis, sheets of plasma cells in the dermis, elongation, acanthosis. I don't really see interface here because this was not the rash of secondary syphilis. These were broad mucus patches mm -hmm. in the genital area, mm -hmm. so-called condyloma lata. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that one, let's move that into the spirochete box. Yeah. Just because we're trying to rebuild it because it disappeared. 
with all of our hundreds of those cases, they all, someone pulled them for a study and they're mm -hmm. sitting on some shelf mm -hmm. somewhere here at MUSC and one of these days we're going to find it. <laughs> you know, it's never nefarious, it's just they forget to bring it back. said it already. Everyone's expecting something difficult. This is a yeah. Nevis. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've got to keep an eye on the time. We've got 10 minutes. So you got hiscocytes and forming, so it's granulomatous and it's forming a nodule or it's interstitial? Um, there's like nodules of like lymphs, but I think the, the giant cells are kind of like interstitial. Yeah, so what's your differential? Interstitial GA. Yeah, so inflammatory GA would be the most likely. But what if I told you this person, it looked like a worm had crawled into their flank all the way down <laughs> the side? Oh. Like a rope. Yeah, one of the other granulomatous yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the classic description of IgD, interstitial granulomatous dermatitis. Okay. So PNGD, palisaded neutrophilic granulomatous, looks more GA-like on the hands, people with ill-defined arthritic syndromes, and then IgD was a rope sign under the skin on the flank. That was the classic description, and now... You know, people use them almost interchangeably. We're not going to have to differentiate that on the test, are no. we? No, well, unless they gave you a clinical. Sure. I mean, yeah. if they give, gave you a clinical of a rope sign yes. together with that, then you only have one diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big nodule. Yeah. Um, so they're sort of light bluish in color. Yeah, so you would have a very broad differential for this, right? So, um, David, what immunostains do you want on this? Um, let's see. So, SOX10 potentially for like my epithelial? Okay, and SOX10 negative. Um, That's actually a good thought. And then maybe a P63. P63, P63 so negative. You're going to get a lot of negatives. Um, it's got like hyalinized cord areas. Yeah, kind of hyalinized cord like areas. Um, See, so you might. Mixed, you know, that might. I, I, that's a my epithelial look to me, but I, mean, I don't think it's more acidic. I agree with you there. Salivary tumor. The other thing, you said it's kind of um, plexiform. So what if it stains um, with some histiocyte type markers? Um. So plexiform fiber histiocytic would be okay. in your differential, especially if they're osteoclasts like giant cells. And this is kind of in a spectrum with that. This one was called cellular neurothechioma. Um, okay. It's not as spindled as a lot of them. Um, I think that one's tough. You mm -hmm. sort of have to feel your way almost by what it doesn't stain with. Okay, so let's go back to things that are a little... Um, lots of fat. So lots of fat. Not much inflammation. And then what are these things? like big thick walled vessel and then the muscular walls go like a pinwheel into that fat um, 
Angio <laughs> Angiomyolipoma. <laughs> Angiomyolipoma, correct. So angiomyolipoma, which is in the pecoma mm -hmm. group of things, when it, they're multiple in kidney, it's tuberous sclerosis, but the mm -hmm. ones we see are solitary in skin, and although they're isolated pecomas, they're not associated with TS. Mm -hmm. So angiomyolipoma. Um, Corneum with parachytosis and acanthosis with mild inflammation. What's with all the granules? Do you normally have no. keratohyaline granules where you have parakeratosis? No. Except in the condition? Granular. Granular mm -hmm. parakeratosis, okay. correct. And anyone remember recently what's been associated as cause? Um, Benzylconium um, chloride. Yeah, from the deodorant. Yeah. yeah. So they started putting benzylconium chloride more commonly in deodorants and all sorts of things. And mm -hmm. that appears, you know, we always thought it was something they were putting in products, right? And mm -hmm. um, right now the one that's strongly linked is benzylconium chloride. It's fibrous. We know they're tough. Okay, this is a good one. Follicular plugging. So, follicular plugging, and then what else? Lichenoid. Lichenoid interface, follicular plugging. So you are absolutely right. You can see the basement membrane zone change there. This is hypertrophic LE. Well done. Someone passed the easy button over there. That was easy. Okay, so there's an infiltrate in the dermis. Yep. What kind of cell? Um, is it histiocytes? Histiocytes, and is the cytoplasm uniform in color? No, it's like two cells. So, so this, this is? Reticular histiocytoma. Very good. Mm -hmm. If it's solitary reticular histiocytoma, if multiple multicentric reticular histiocytosis, multicentric is associated with? So cancer and up to 25% and then also the horrible rheumatoid-like mm -hmm. arthritis. So often the arthritis comes first. They're writing these things off as rheumatoid nodules until they become more and more numerous and one gets biopsied. Mm -hmm. So you're saying lichenoid. Do you see real sawtoothing? Not really. Not really, but it's definitely interface, right? Yeah. So maybe vacuolar. So it's interface, and then you've got... Is there little going on in the dermis, or is it kind of a busy dermis? Busy dermis. So busy dermis, and you got lots of lots of vessels in here. Um, around them, you have, you know, it's kind of grayish, like there's a little cytoplasm to the lymphs. So you got interface plus interstitial, busy, busy. Syphilis. You are correct, syphilis. <laughs> well done. Okay, I think we're there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
salad. I need breakfast. I need to 